Today, I'm gonna to show you how to improve your frame rate with frame generation, and you don't even need a GPU that supports it. Stay tuned. The latest trend in gaming, for better or for worse, is frame generation. This is the process of using AI to generate fake frames in between real frames to give you an overall better frame rate. The problem is, if you have a lower power GPU that doesn't support frame generation, or the game you're playing doesn't support it, then you're just stuck with a lower frame rate. Now, we do have programs like lossless scaling that will give you frame generation on any GPU in any game. The problem is it takes cycles from your GPU to work, making your GPU even less effective in games. But what if that wasn't the case? That's what we're gonna do today. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Are you still running Windows 11 unactivated because the license just costs too much? Then you should check out today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, where you can get a valid Windows 11 license for around $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark and actually be able to change your desktop background with a valid license for Windows 11. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 11 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 11 and click the link that says change product key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark. And check out the description for deals on not just Windows, but Office 2. Now, on with the video. So the idea for this video came from doom scrolling one evening through YouTube and I saw a video from ETA Prime. If you're into retro gaming and you don't follow ETA Prime, you really should. But in this video, he added a second GPU, just a low-end Intel Arc GPU, in order to do the processing for lossless scaling so the frame generation didn't drag down the primary GPU. It worked really well, but the problem was that you need a second GPU to do it. So, while watching this video, I wondered if the same thing could be done with the integrated APU in most modern processors. Now, I've had this idea before, and it was a colossal failure. Way back when lossless scaling started supporting offloading its rendering to a separate GPU, I had the same idea. So I played around with it, and the reason why you guys never saw a video was because it simply didn't work. However, the reason it didn't work wasn't because it couldn't work, but it was because I was setting the system up wrong for it. Thanks to ETA Prime's video, just a few details that I didn't do is what made my original test a colossal failure. Now, the first thing you need to do is ignore the first thing that's burned into every PC gamer's head from early on and that is to plug your monitor into your onboard video port and not your discrete GPU. And it turns out that this right here is the reason my initial tests were a failure. Because if you don't follow this one step, then what you'll end up with is you'll get horrendous screen tearing and a lower overall frame rate, kind of making the whole thing not worth it. I always thought it was due to the APU's inability to keep up with the frames being generated by the discrete GPU. But it turns out it had nothing to do with that. In fact, I wish I could give you a detailed explanation for why this is the case, but I'm pretty sure it just has to do with the way Windows handles multiple GPUs and how lossless scaling interacts with those GPUs. So, for the first thing you need to do is to figure out how to boot your computer from your onboard video, even though you're using a discrete GPU. Every system is going to be different, unfortunately. I did this test on two different systems, and both systems had a completely different process to make it work. My original testing was done on an AM4 socket motherboard with a Ryzen 5 5600G. In order to get it to work on that board, I had to first boot the system with the discrete GPU unplugged completely. From there, I had to go into the BIOS and tell the system to prioritize the onboard video. Once I did that, I had to plug the G discrete GPU into the second PCI Express port. It would not post at all when plugged into the primary PCI Express port. 
I'm not exactly sure why, but my theory is that the 5600G uses the primary PCI Express channel for the onboard video. This is also, it's possible that the 5600G that I was using was just a defective CPU because this particular CPU was pulled from a system that had issues. Because ultimately on that system, I was never able to get the discrete GPU to work in the primary PCI Express slot even with the APU disabled. It just wouldn't post at all. But I didn't spend a whole lot of time playing around with it because I really didn't care at the time. Because I ultimately moved my testing over to this system here, which is a Ryzen 5 7600 on an AM5 socket motherboard. And it didn't have that specific limitation. No, instead it had completely new limitations that I had to overcome. The first one, just like before, you have to go into the BIOS and tell the system that you want to prioritize the onboard GPU instead of the discrete GPU. And once I set that, it booted fine with the onboard video. For a few minutes at least. Because in order to do screen capture on this system right here, for this video, I couldn't use OBS because OBS uses the same capture method as lossless scaling does. Therefore, I can't be screen capturing like I would typically. So I needed to use an HDMI screen cap screen recorder that I use kind of as a backup recorder on videos. But here's where the problem came in because after a few minutes, the onboard GPU would just turn off for no reason. The only way to get it back was to unplug the HDMI cable from the motherboard and plug it back in again. And it would give me a couple more minutes of video before it would just shut off again. Unfortunately, I was never able to solve that issue because luckily I found a workaround that was simply to plug a DisplayPort connector onto the motherboard instead. And since I needed to route that through an HDMI capture device, I just used a DisplayPort to HDMI adapter. So I went through all of that just to tell you that getting this to work initially is going to be a major hassle. In fact, when I fired this system up this morning to start filming this video right now, it started crashing constantly using the DisplayPort. And I'm not sure why, because I didn't do anything to fix it. It just stopped crashing. Maybe it needs to warm up like an old car. I don't know, but just trust me, it's going to be a hassle getting this to work. I promise you that. And unfortunately, I can't guide you through every step you need to go through in order to make it work because everyone's system is going to be different. Ultimately, most systems that have integrated graphics automatically disable the integrated graphics as soon as you plug a discrete GPU into the system. This is by design, so unfortunately, you're going to have to find a way to work around that design to get them to both work together. But with that said, once you have it working, it should work really well. Let's jump on the system and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so once you have the system up and booted with your display plugged into the integrated graphics port, not the GPU, that's extremely important and I can't stress that enough. If you don't connect it that way, you're not gonna experience the same benefit that I did, trust me. But what you can do is you can actually right click right here, go to your task manager, you can go over to your performance tab right here and you can see that we currently have two GPUs. We have the AMD Radeon graphics, which is the integrated graphics for the Ryzen 5 7600, as well as we have an NVIDIA RTX 3060. Now, what we're gonna need to do is first, we're gonna have to launch lossless scaling. Lossless scaling costs about seven bucks in the Steam store and it's worth every dime. I highly recommend getting it. But once you have it, just go ahead and launch it through Steam and at that point, you need to have this running in the background in order for it to work for whatever game. So once you get it started, just fire it up and then start whatever game you want. You don't wanna actually set up the scaling now because it won't do anything until the game's running. So I'm gonna go ahead and run Cyberpunk 2077 because that one will stress my GPU enough to make it worthwhile to actually do this demonstration. And once I get Cyberpunk fired up, I'll go ahead and jump back in. 
Okay, so here we are in Cyberpunk. As you can see on the top left-hand side, our GPU 2 is our discrete GPU, and our GPU 1 is our integrated. And as you can see, we're not doing anything with our integrated. It kind of goes up a little bit here and there, but I think it's mostly just because the display is being used to display a picture, and that's essentially it. But if we play this right now, as you can see, we're sitting at about 50, maybe the low 50s. It kind of goes into the mid 50s occasionally. This, this is a really heavy game, so it does push this GPU hard and so as you can see it's really averaging right around 50 frames a second which is fine for this however what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and alt tab out so we can op open up lossless scaling and from here we're gonna scroll down and as you can see it's currently set up to run on the RTX 3060 so I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at that and then just kind of go over our frame generation settings here. We're using the LSFG, which is the lossless scalings frame generation, 3.1, this is the newest one. We have it fixed, and then we want to do a multiplier of two. So essentially what that's going to do is double our frame rate. And then for the flow scale, this is essentially the quality of the frames that it's creating. I usually sit at right around 60% is usually good. And then you can turn performance on, but this is going to degrade the quality of the frames that are being generated. So I would recommend leaving that off. But with that set up, you push the scale button and then you click back into the game and just give it a second and the scaling will take over. And once it does, you'll see at the top left hand corner, that our input frame rate is dropped down to the high 40s. So we did lose a little bit of frame rate there and it gives us our overall frame rate as 94, 98, it kind of right under 100. But as we move around, as you'll see, we're kind of getting into the mid to low 40s in some cases. So we've lost potentially up to 10 frames a second by running lossless scaling on our discrete GPU. However, our overall frame rate is a lot higher at 95. So it is benefiting us. It's just not benefiting us as much as it could be. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna tab out open lossless scaling up again. We're gonna go ahead and push unscale. And then from here, we're gonna switch the preferred GPU from our RTX 3060 just to the integrated Radeon graphics. Then we're gonna push scale again, click back into the game. We're gonna give it a second to start scaling again. And just like before, you'll see that it'll start up in the top right there. So now, as you can see, we haven't lost any of our base frame rate. We're still running at 53 at the low 50s. But as you can see from the GPU usage, we're using 100% of our integrated GPU and we're using 99% of our regular discrete GPU. Now, as we stop, it's not using as much because it doesn't need as much because it's not having to do anything because we're not moving around. But if we move around, you'll see that we're still sitting in the low 50s. We're using a good percentage of our discrete GPU, but what's Better than that is, as you can see, we've gained not only the 10 frames a second that we lost from our base frame rate, but multiplied that by two, we're actually gaining about 20 frames a second in our overall frame rate. And this does a pretty good job of making the game look pretty good. Now, if I pulled an actual weapon out here, this is one of the downsides of lossless scaling, is the, the reticle in the middle, it can't really decide what happens to it sometimes. So as you move it around, you'll see that it gets a little crazy However, honestly, as this is a really obvious when you're just looking at it, when you're actually playing games, it's nowhere near as obvious as you'd think it was. But if you're looking at it and you're expecting it, then you definitely can see it. it, it it's, it's pretty obviously there. But we've doubled our frame rate and all we have to do is deal with kind of a funky reticle. Other than that, the graphics are actually pretty decent. And if we kind of go out right here, we can look at some of the more of the world right here. It looks really good. And we're getting a really solid frame rate by just using the integrated graphics instead of the GPU. So one of the reasons why I think this is such a cool option is because we all have tons of money invested into gaming systems and a lot of these gaming systems have integrated GPUs that just sit there and do nothing the entire life of the system. Now granted, these APUs don't provide much gaming performance and that's the reason why they're not used. But by simply using them for frame generation and leaving other, your other discrete GPU to push out as many frames as it can, it's like essentially getting free FPS.
Of course, you're going to have to pay the $7 for lossless scaling, but considering what that program is capable of, it's worth every penny of $7. One of the only real downsides that I saw with this setup is that my screen capture device that I use to capture this video will only capture at 60 FPS. Because of that, the system only detects it as a 60 hertz monitor. Lossless scaling will only accept as an input FPS equal to or less than the monitor's refresh rate. That's why I did this demonstration in Cyberpunk, because it's one of the only games that I have that my system can't push over 60 FPS. Although, just barely, it did hit 50, so that says something for it. Other games that I tried natively will run at over 100 FPS without a problem. Lossless scaling will only accept 60 FPS as an input and multiply that by two gives you 120 FPS. Many of those games were sitting at 120 before I even turned lossless scaling on in the first place. But if that's a problem for you, then you probably don't need lossless scaling to begin with. However, if you have a system that is capable of far more than 60 FPS and you're still running a monitor with a 60 hertz refresh rate, then you really should get a monitor with a faster refresh rate. And if you think that 60 FPS is enough because the human eye can't see more than 60 anyway, then you probably want to check out this video right here where I refute that myth. The human eye can see much more than 60 FPS. But as always, you guys have a great day.